G'day friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, my name is James, welcome to today's video. I have WD-40'd my chair, so I'm feeling very ready and prepared for today's video. I can uh, wiggle about in my chair and get all excited because I got a little order that I placed a few weeks ago, I think, maybe a couple weeks ago. It arrived here a lot quicker than I thought it would, um, considering we're having a few difficulties with the postal system here in the US at the moment. Anyway, it's from Greenleaf and Blueberry. It's uh, handmade watercolors and I'm so excited. Look how cute this little box is that it came in. All nice and neatly wrapped, very protected. Um, it had a little brown cover on the outside but it, it's got my address on it so I thought I'd just unwrap it uh, but I have not seen inside. I've never used these before so I thought I'd do a little bit of an unboxing and a first impressions video so I can bring you along for the excitement and the joy. Let's see if I can figure out how to open this here. Um, I've got some information about them too. I bought these with my own money. This is not a sponsored review. This is not a review that anyone asked me to do. It's simply because I'm excited. Oh look, I am so jazzed by your enthusiasm. I hope you love these colors and enjoy many glorious hours of painting with them. Oh, that's so sweet, thank you. Um, I got this little card, a curious little sticker. And here, I ordered two sets. I went so overboard. These are not cheap either. I mean, a lot of handmade watercolors aren't cheap for obvious reasons. They're handmade. Um, but I, I love handmade watercolors. It's so exciting uh, because people like put a lot of time, effort, care, and attention and love into them. And um, they perform really differently to your kind of mass manufactured watercolors. Even the high-end brands like Daniel Smith. I've had a lot of uh, handmade watercolors that are very comparable to some of the best watercolors I've ever used. So, um, every company is different though, so I, I wanted to test these out, although I had heard some good things, and the website is very informative. I, I don't know her name, is it her? I hope it's a her. I think it's Aaliyah. <laughs> I'm gonna say, let's just call her Greenleaf. Um, Miss Greenleaf does a very thorough job. I hope it's a miss. What if it's a mister? Okay, whoever owns this company, the company owner. I should have done my research, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty sure it's a lady. Um, does their research really, really well with the pigments and the um, made by hand on the Western Slope of Colorado. That's so sweet. Um, it was really into color, like pigments, natural pigments. And the beauty of these, wow, this is super protected. And there's lots of little branding in here as well. Oh, this is a brochure. Oh, wow. There's a full-on brochure. <laughs> so this is a color chart. Um, I won't read you all this information because I do just kind of want to get to playing with it. I will go into a voiceover when I play with all this stuff. I'm just uh, voicing through this live so you can uh, get my honest first impressions. Um, but my first impressions is packaged really well. I'll be shocked if there's anything uh, shifted about. Look how cute. All right. I got the naturalist set and I got the sketches set. So there's these cute little tiny tins. I have one other tin that's this size. It's very standard, uh, kind of a deep little watercolor tin, so I do like that. And um, a few things about the watercolors. I'm not sure if both of these are. The paints themselves are artist grade single pigment paints, which is interesting. Uh, light fast, there's no fillers or brighteners or dispersants in there, and it's made uh, with it says pure general, pure, wow, pure genuine natural pigments. I'm not sure about some of them, um, but I, I believe most of them are. Maybe all of them are. I'm just not sure. I think some of them aren't now. Like maybe all the more recent sets. I think I saw some uh, that weren't a natural pigment. They were a synthetic. I'm not quite sure, but m for the most part, I think they're all natural. And uh, they're made traditionally by hand with muller and slab, and they say, it says on their website they're artist and chemist formulated. Actually, um, it even says the pigment is bound in natural highest grade gum arabic, which we process ourselves from the raw form. We use local organic honey in our formulation to prevent cracking and overly hard paint and to improve rewetting. Well, there you go. A small amount of natural preservative is added to prevent mold growth and deter insect interest in the delicious honey. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, great. So I, I think this is probably like the purest kind of watercolor you'd be able to get um, as far as there being no extra additives that don't need to be in there, like any kind of like stretching agent or whatever. I'm not super involved with the manufacturing of watercolor, so I'm just making it all up. But I've seen 
many words that make me believe that this is just wonderful paint. So, the only way I'll really know is if I get to painting with it, right? Because we can have beautiful paints, but we can just not know what to do with them, so I might fall into that category. <laughs> um, Alright, this is the Naturalist set. These are all swatched out, so I think I'll just put these inside the tin. I don't think I need to make any swatch cards. Beautiful little blue ribbon I'm going to put over here. Sorry about that noise, it's super hot in here. I have the window open. This is the Naturalist set. Oh, okay, so these are the shells. This one was really interesting because it comes with these half pans, but then these colours come in shells. But the shells have little magnets on them too. So let's open up the magenta. A little bit of washi tape on this glassine bag. Oh, look how tiny that little magnet is. How cute. Alright, I'll put that in there. Oh, it's a strong magnet. That's nice. Um, it's the first time I've ever seen them stored in shells. I think it's just because... It's a smaller option than having a half pan, and some of these pigments are expensive. Uh, and obviously there's a lot more pigment going in there because there's no fillers added. And so you're paying for a lot of that pigment, and you're also paying for the handmade nature of handmade watercolours. So if you do go and take a look at these, um, I think in total I spent about 200 and... I'm not going to finish that sentence. Uh, go and look at the website <laughs> if you're interested. <laughs> I said that out loud and I was like, oh, I hope Steve doesn't watch this. Don't worry. I work hard for my money. It is, it's a taxable expense too. <laughs> I listen to all the justifications coming out. I'm petrified of what I've just done. All right, that's the grey ochre. I want to try and line these up with how they're supposed to be in here. So there's that pipe stone. I'm excited to see that colour swatched out. And green earth, I don't have anything like that that rewets really easily, so I'm curious about these colours. They're very natural looking. And this is a faux pearl, which is cute. Handmade watercolour. Wait, what's this one? Eggshell. Love that. It doesn't even look that um it doesn't look that opaque. Usually those light colours are full of white pigment and look really opaque. So let's open up this one. Pop this in here. I think these are all in the right order anyway. I'll have to unwrap all of these, but I won't bore you by doing that in front of you. I just wanted to get you to uh, give you a quick look at what these look like. I'm very impressed with how they've arrived and what they look like right now. I've, I'm just going to play with them. I think that's the best thing for me to do. I'm not going to swatch them all out because they are swatched out here and I don't really do square swatches much anyway. Um, usually when I get a new art supply, I just love to throw it into the mix of having like a little play date with myself. So I might get mixed media. I might mix it with some pens or some pencils. Um, but I want to use this as if I were just throwing this in the mix. Wow. All right, sorry about that jump cut. I had to... Uh... <laughs> I'm not going to close the window, but I swear some of these cars have microphones on their exhaust pipes. It's so bizarre. I don't know who... What is the appeal? I know I've asked this a million times, but seriously, what's the appeal of having an exhaust that is that loud? Okay. <laughs> Next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to throw these into the mix as if I were just playing with them. I think I just said that, but that's how I... I don't swatch much. I just put them through their paces, have a look at everything, see how it works. Because ultimately, I'm not going to change my whole style of creativity to be able to fit the paint. I would love for the paint just to fit what I like to do. But there might be some limitations, there might be some challenges, maybe I've assumed something in here is a bit more transparent than it is, and maybe it isn't when I actually go to use it. And so those things are good for me to know, um, but I'll try and use as much of them as I can and get a really good feel for it. So, I'm going to put you in speed, I'll give you a little voiceover of what I think and chat to you about whatever else I feel like talking about. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for this first impressions little prelude, I'll speak to you in the voiceover in a second. Bye. Hello voiceover, it's me. Help, I'm trapped. <laughs> I'm feeling real loopy today. It is Friday morning. Um, first of all, I just wanted to show you how precisely these little candy wrappers are wrapped and uh, just show you quickly undoing that. There are magnets on the back of everything. There's also batch codes. Um, and I think that was really interesting to see as well because you could kind of see which batches were coming from where because there are some uh, mul uh, multiples. There are some duplicate colors in each set. Uh, but even the green earth, there's two green earths, but one is called green earth, one's called green earth too. So they're different batches and you can see the difference in the colors. Actually, are they different batches or are they just different pigments? In any case, they're both green earth, but can you see them left and right? Completely different uh, properties. So 
Um, that was really interesting. I wanted to show you how they were packaged because as with the rest of the packaging, it was done meticulously. And I think that deserves to be recognized. I'm not a stickler for that kind of stuff, but I think, uh, I think they're really like, I mean, kind of nailed it. You couldn't ask for anything more as far as, uh, having your box like padded nicely and having everything tied up in ribbons and bows. It was a whole experience to open. And I think that's one of the things that you're also paying with. Uh, paying for with handmade items like that um, at high price points. So uh, we're not going to talk about the value because I do believe that value is subjective for a lot of people. Um, I'll let you know that f like straight up, I think they're absolutely worth it. I know I had my little panic moment of justification at the beginning of the video um, and I've come to more justification since then, but <laughs> it, I think uh, the Testament is actually playing with them, actually using them. And my final verdict is I would absolutely buy them again. Uh, pending they were in stock, they're actually kind of hard to get your hands on. And uh, pending I had the money to buy them the next time. But this is something that I did set aside money for. I did save for these. So, um, you know, it wasn't like an impulsive purchase. I, I waited. I subscribed to the newsletter. I was waiting for them to come out. I guess it was more impulsive that I bought two sets, but I just wanted to try. I, I wanted to try both. I had my eye on both. What I was immediately drawn to when I first came across Greenleaf and Blueberry on Instagram was they had presented a cyan, magenta and yellow watercolor as the CMYK primary set. Um, which for me, I was fascinated with because I have a, pri a printer primary palette is what I call it. And it's cyans, magentas, and yellows from different companies and different tones, um, like different shades. I, I like to have those in a set so that I can kind of create the ultimate mixing palette. Because if you think about a printer... <laughs> It's got those, wow, such a weird little catch breath that just happened. Um, if you think about a printer, they've got four ink tanks. A bl well, new ones have masses of ink tanks, but the standard is black. And then you've got cyan, magenta, and yellow. And so whatever you can print, you get from those colors. So it just stands to reason if you've got those in your watercolor palette, you can make all the colors a printer could make. So I like to collect different brands versions of what I perceive those colors to be. No one really sells a cyan labeled watercolor it's kind of difficult to come by um but this one is labeled thalo cyan i'm not quite sure what the pigment is I, it is available to see i think but i don't i didn't get that information again i'm giving you my candid thoughts not a full review <laughs> i think i have to specify that sometimes because people really come for me when i review things <laughs> and i don't do a good job i am well aware of how much i don't prepare um, the YouTube channel, this is just for me sharing my candid thoughts. Um, I'll leave the reviews and the kind of in-depth, uh, looks at things to art snacks. Now that I do art snacks, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, to uh, such a time as when I'm working for a different company, but I am, I'm doing art snacks. Um, yeah, for me, that makes more sense because that is something that I'm setting out to do with this. I just want to see how they work. I want to play with them. And I want to see uh, just what those colors do, what those natural pigments do, how they feel uh, in my process. And, you know, I guess what everyone wants to feel like you made a good purchase, you made a good decision, you found something that is really beautiful. And um, I can just say the the watercolors themselves are stun Wario, like just insanely pigmented. Um, the fact that there's no kind of extenders and fillers and, you know, all that extra the additives uh, that come in a lot of those student grade watercolors or some manu mass manufactured watercolors. Uh, it just goes to show the difference of quality in like an artist grade paint. You really don't need as much. And uh, again, I think another reason why you really are paying for that, because even though, how do I explain this in other terms? You know, when you're buying something, but you think you're is costing a lot of money, but it's actually going to last you longer in the long run. So you're not going to buy, like if you buy a cheap pair of sunglasses, but over your life, you have to buy them five more times, but then you could have just, and so you've ended up spending like a hundred dollars on a pair of on sunglasses over the five years. You could have just spent a hundred dollars and had one pair for five years. I think it's kind of that, that kind of thing. So is it? Who knows? I'm making that up. <laughs> I should just share my thoughts, not my uh, my opinions on value. Because I, I really think they're great. I would buy them again. Um, absolutely. In a heartbeat. They're beautiful. 
I hope I can make them last for a super long time because they're they're a little difficult to get your hands on. I, like I said, I had to subscribe to the newsletter and wait it out. <laughs> but the the patience, like the the anticipation, just made it all the more worth it. And I loved doing these little swatch dolls. It's been such a long time since I've done these little swatch dolls. If you didn't know, um, years ago I started doing these little swatch dolls as a way to test my art supplies because I don't like the little square swatches. I think there's a, a reason to do them, but I just don't think they give you a great feeling for how the product works, especially if you're a mixed media artist and you're mixing things together all the time. I think it's just good to kind of throw them into the mix and start painting with them, start working with, you know, whatever it is you're testing. But the swatch dolls are really, really cute for that. And I just hadn't done one in a long time. So these were really, really fun. And uh, they turned out really, really fun like I don't know if it's just the watercolors it probably was I'm just gonna give all credit to the watercolors because <laughs> this isn't a style that I've been working with it just kind of happened as I was doing it I've, I've been working on some virtual voyage stuff but this is not the style of that either so I don't know what happened this kind of just I think I was channeling the uh, excitement of the watercolor palette into some wannabe children's book illustrations but they look they look really cute I love them and yeah, so I guess, I, and well, like I was saying with the, the swatch dolls, I, I put them through their paces by drawing these little dollies, but, um, and they're kind of sectioned off. I th used to draw them so like each skin tone was a different color, each hair was a different color, and the dress could be broken up into different colors. And that way I could swatch out a whole set with just a few of the dolls. And I just called them swatch dolls because what else are you going to call them? <laughs> um, but it's kind of the same thing. You know, if you're doing little squares, I think that's fine. But it's, you know, when a makeup artist will swatch a new eyeshadow palette on their arm or like they'll do finger swatches on their, like the back of their hand. And then they'll tell you, well, it looks different when you use a brush and when you put it on your eyelid and when you've got eye, uh, like eyeshadow base on. It's like, well, it's kind of a waste of time to swatch them out on your hand then because you have no idea what the, unless you're painting your hand, you have no idea if these are even going to work or not. So yes, it does give you a, a look at the color, um, but does it give you a look at how they really work? No, I don't think so. And there can be a really good value um, in the exercise of actually just putting them through their paces straight up um, rather than going through the whole swatching, you know, the colors, then swatching the secondary colors, making the charts. Um, some people like that. Some people find it actually very um, cathartic to go through that process. So by all means do it. I'm not saying don't, but my suggestion is if you really want to get a feeling for something, if you really want to know if it's going to work for you, because remember it may work, but it may not work for you. Um, if you've bought a set of watercolors and they're really beautiful, but they happen to be a little opaque and you're someone who likes to draw in pen first and then paint over the top of them, that might not work for you, but are they going to work for someone else? Absolutely. This is, I don't even know why I'm going through this process. I just feel like I have to make all these qualifications because <laughs> whenever I give my opinion, um, people take it for like a legit review and give me like lots of feedback on how I don't review things properly. So I'm making all of this like special compensation. I'm just going to leave it. It is what it is. I said what I said. <laughs> the watercolors are fantastic. I'm obsessed. I can't wait to ooh, hit the keyboard. I can't wait to just play with them again. I, I, I want to get this video done so I can just go play with them again. They're going to enter the mix. I'm not going to put them in a different, like I'm not going to depot them into separate watercolor palettes and make, you know, a new one. I'm going to keep them in the sets that they're in because I think they're both fantastic sets as they are and super versatile. They're made to be sets that you would only need one of. I just bought both because I was feeling very generous towards myself the day that I ordered it. <laughs> but yeah, that pigment goes so far, and the the earth the earthy mineral pigments, like the genuine pigments, j just look so beautiful. I, I've had a lot of these genuine pigments before that can look a little dull or a little muddy, but these ones, like, there's a color to them. There's a vibrancy to it, like a richness to it, and a tone to it, as well as those beautiful granulating properties that, I mean, it's just so much fun. That shimmer was also really unexpected as well, and rewet like a dream which is nice for shimmers because sometimes they're really difficult to uh, re-wet and use. But yeah, overall, 100 out of 100. Uh, couldn't love it more. Can't wait to show you more pieces with it. Love the little swatch dolls. Love their little style. Um, yeah, if you're thinking about getting a set, let me know. I'd love to 
watch you experience them for the first time. If you've got videos that you'd like me to see <laughs> of your first impressions of your review, leave them in the comments below. Other than that, we also had a full Etsy shop restock today. So go check that out if you want new washi tape or restocked stamp sets. We're also doing a Concepts 2 stamping workshop coming out soon. So keep an eye out for that. And I'll be around again to talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.